Here we go, five fans once again, three rounds. This in the welterweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, a jiu-jitsu practitioner standing five feet, seven and a half inches tall. He weighed in officially 170 and one half pounds and brings a professional record that stands at 15 victories, nine defeats, one no contest. Hailing from Paris, France, here is Sadina Sack. And next is opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. A mixed martial artist standing 5 feet 11 inches tall. He weighed in at the welterweight limit, 171 pounds. A 37-fight veteran, he brings 25 victories and 12 defeats into tonight's bout. Hailing from Chelmsford, Essex, England, here is Jack the Stone Mesa! <laughs> Referee in charge, Ricardo Mitchell. Rich Mitchell about to get this welterweight contest underway. Three five-minute rounds here at Cage Warriors 61 in a man Jordan. Jack Mason in the bright red compression trunks. His opponent, Sedina Sek, in the blue board shorts. Brad Wharton and Josh Palmer calling the action for you. And it's Jack Mason taking the initiative, taking the center of the cage and pouring out with that jab to start this one off, Josh. Yeah, let's see who's the first one to really explode here. Mason, when he changes level and goes forward, is almost impossible to sprawl and stop. Real rugby tackle style entry. Sec, the slightly shorter of the two gentlemen. Mason got a little bit of height, a little bit of reach, trying perhaps. We always see very good boxing from a lot of the guys based in Paris. But of course, they do have the ground game to go along with it, so well rounded are oh, the French fighters who find their way to Cage Warriors. And when you talk about ground games in the welterweight division, you're going to put Jack Mason right up there, Josh. Fantastic submission wrestler. Yeah, very grinding style. Really bears down and just wears on the opponent. You know, when you've got a guy as big and strong as Jack on top of you, it's not only physically damaging, but it's mentally and physically exhausting. And I'm sure that's going to be what he's looking to do here against Sedina Sec. For the time being, though, content to duke it out on the feet. A couple of nice low kicks from Mason in this fight. Yeah, I mean, it does sometimes take him a little bit to really get going and feel out the opponent. Dish Try and establish the range. In a sec. And it's those that make the deep, dark thud that you want to be careful of. They're the ones that do the damage. Nice crisp work in the stand-up so far from Sadina Sack. Yeah. Nice straight right from Mason there. Very heavy-handed fighter. Spoke to a lot of the guys who've uh, trained and sparred with Jack, and they do say that the hands on Jack Mason are like a pair of anvils and drop you with a jab at a moment's notice. Yeah, it's one of those things that if he throws them, that they're very, very dangerous. But some fights we've seen him fall into. Norman Parisi is, a, you know, that we mentioned in the, the walkout is a great example. Fell into a counter-punching mentality. Didn't really let his hands go. He does there, though. Good left from the stone. And nimble feet to get out of the range of the counter shot that came in from Sedina Sec. Mason chasing his man around the cage now. He's going to look to reset the center of the mat. Cage Royal 61 sponsored by Kia and Royal Jordanian Airlines. Please do check out our sponsors online. And while you're there, why not join the conversation on Twitter with the hashtag CWFC61. Tell us what you think of tonight's action. Very measured start from both these guys. A few brief moments of explosion, but still feeling each other out here. What we often see in Thai boxing and boxing, the first round uses a feeling out process. And that's certainly what we're seeing here in this first of three five minute rounds here in the Cage Warriors welterweight division. Set being aggressive, but not as accurate as Jack Mason so far in this one. No, I've got to say, already Jack Mason's strikes look a lot straighter than we've seen in some of his previous encounters, really firing that right hand out. We were really impressed by the hands of uh, Arnold Allen, one of Jack's students, and uh, Arnold Almighty Allen victorious earlier this evening in Jack Mason's corner for this fight. No check of the kick from Mason. A couple of those are going to start to build up on the man from Chelmsford. Yes. 
Mason moving forward with the left hook there, not finding a home for it. He's back with the jab. Just feel like one of these guys needs to change tempo now and try and really put their stamp on the last minute of this round. It's been a very lengthy feeling out process. Really trying to pick some shots, and this is what we've seen from Mason so many times. A takedown right at the end of the round, try and really enforce his presence on the fight. Well, not a huge amount of action so far, so you've got to think perhaps a takedown at the end of this one, a, a good minute's worth of top control could be uh, a win on the judges' scorecards for Jack Mason if he can achieve it. Nice knee to the body there from Mason. Resets in the centre of the cage. 20 seconds to go in this first of three five-minute rounds here at Cage Warriors 61. Looking fairly light on the feet is Mason. Final Sek with a very seconds. square stance. Mason, there, Mason charges in. Yeah, looking to change level again. Not long for him to try and complete this takedown, though. Stop! Oh, it's corner asking him to finish that takedown, but time was his enemy there, Josh, at the end of that first round. Not a huge amount of action there, but possibly inching ahead on the judges' scorecards is Jack Mason, but I mean, that... Mason looking a little bit frustrated with himself in the corner there, Josh. Yeah, I mean, they're the kind of rounds where you really start to look at who was controlling the range, who was taking the centre of the cage, who was perhaps being the more aggressive. You know, the strikes were fairly even. There wasn't really any periods of ground control or too much wrestling. So that's when these other factors start coming into play. And it's going to be a very interesting decision for the judges in that first round. You could even argue quite happily for a 10-10, I feel. Well, both these guys have finished their fair share of fights, so it may very well not come down to the judges having to make a decision for this one, Josh. Now, let's see what happens when we get underway in a moment for the second. Ten minutes is a long time in the mixed martial arts cage. Anything can happen. I suspect the corner of Jack Mason will have said to him, throw your hands, come behind those with your takedowns, and let's put this guy on his back quickly. Well, so often in mixed martial arts, it's not about who's the better striker, who's the better wrestler, or who's the better grappler. It's about the guy who's the best at linking those aspects of the game together. And as you say, if Mason can pump that jab out there, follow it with a straight right, possibly a body shot, and then charge him with one of those bulldozer takedowns, he's going to be keeping his opponent guessing, and that's how he's going to win this fight. Similarly for Sedina Sek, I'd really like to see him mix up the strikes a bit more. He's had a couple of uh, nice leg kicks. Found a bit of success early on with that. Needs to chain those into combinations. Another leg kick there from Sedina Sek. Yeah, it's a Needs good game. to put those on the end of a two, three punch exactly. combination. Exactly, it's a good game plan for the, the Frenchman. Land a few more leg kicks, let's get those hooks working. And the key for him is gonna be combinations and stepping off on those angles. If he allows Mason to follow him back in a straight line, Mason's gonna go right through him. Another kick to that lead leg of Jack Mason. Mason not showing any ill effect from it as of yet. Stop, time. And an air and low kick from Jack Mason there. It's gonna cause a brief break to the action. Oh, yeah. Interesting tactic yeah. from Sedina Sek to reaffix his groin protection. Let's go, time in. Doesn't take the full five minutes he's entitled to. Wants to get right back to the action here. That cage warrior is 61. Both men land in that exchange. Nothing of any significance. Very tentative striking exchanges here, Josh. Both men respecting the technique and power of their opponents. Yeah, and there's there's also a, it's just a very consistent tempo to this fight so far. It's become a little predictable for both guys. They're landing good strikes. Sedina again with a fantastic low kick. But they are falling into a pattern at this stage. Well, Mason's doing a good job of backing his man up, but he's just not able to capitalise on that as of yet. You think uh, putting Sedina Sek within a few inches of that cage would be perfect for Mason to bulldoze him with one of his trademark takedowns, but not really seeing much of that yet, Josh. Yeah, I'd definitely like to see, see him go forward a bit more. And there's some of the combination work from Sek. Jack getting some approval from his corner there. Again, stalking Sedina Sek against the cage. Straight right didn't land there from Mason. Good, good. 
I mean, they're good technical strikes. They're just not quite at the right range. And there he goes, changing level for the takedown. He's got a much better grip in on the hips this time. Scoops Sedina Sec onto the mat. And this is where Jack Mason is dangerous. In fact, that's pretty much the exact same position that he finished Vladimir Panaseko in his last fight Matt. up against that very same corner post, Josh. Yeah, Matt Inman as well looked to put Sedina Sex back on the mat, secure him with that left arm and start dropping some big right elbows. Sec trying to work his head free to grip around the body of Mason. Mason trying to get a little bit of space here, create some distance between him and his opponent to drop down some elbow shots. It's exactly what we thought Mason would do. Secure with the left arm, grind the strikes away with the right. And it's one of those things he'll start out at this kind of slow tempo, and when he feels one land, he will turn the pace up straight away. Good head position as well. Really good at using his head in these positions is Jack Mason. Yeah, makes it so uncomfortable for the man on the bottom, but Sedina Sex going to have to start moving here, getting on a hip. Because right now he is losing this round. One minute to go in this second of three five-minute rounds. Once again, a huge shout out to our Cage Warriors production crew working tirelessly through this torrid weather conditions here in Jordan to bring you this broadcast. Jack Mason looking very comfortable here, but I'd still like to see a little bit more from the Englishman. Sidney Sex searching for a Kimura on that far arm. Mason burying it inside his thigh. It's a good static defense from there. And looking to pull the arm up through. Really good work from Mason in defense there. And on the floor from Sedina Sec there. A wise move, stopping those knees to the head. Mason can land them now if he so chooses. Ten seconds left in this second round. Yeah, Sedina Sec is looking to block an interesting upward elbow from the Frenchman there. And round two in the books here at Cage Warriors, 61. Yeah, better period of control for Jack Mason in that one. Earned the takedown that we suspected he'd be looking for. Some good strikes on the ground, but nothing too damaging for the Frenchman. Let's have a look at some of the replays from that second round. Nice leg kicks. Really the best defense from Sedina Sec were those leg kicks. Early on in this round, another chopping leg kick there. And another targeting that lead leg of Jack Mason was Sedina Sec. Mason, though, able to walk through those shots, Josh, and yeah, eventually you, got his takedown. You've got to start questioning what are those worth in the grand scheme of things. They are very effective strikes. But Mason marching on through for the, the top position and perhaps his top position on the ground a bit more threatening than the leg kicks of the Frenchman. Seconds out. Let's go. Round three underway at the instruction of referee Rich Mitchell. Jack Mason, Sedina Sec here in the Cage Warriors welterweight division. Mason again taking the center of the cage. Sedina Sec doubling up on the jab. That's right hand over the top there from the Frenchman. So looking lively at the start of this third round, Josh. Yeah, he, I'm sure his corner have told him that he's got to start being a bit more decisive. Try and land with some intent. I would imagine that, despite not a huge amount of action in this bout so far, I would imagine that Jack Mason is ahead on the scorecards now and that Sedina Sec is going to need a finish. He's going to have to turn up the aggression here in this third round. Yeah, I mean, that first round was very, very even, so Sedina Set clinches this one. It's going to be very interesting to see how it's scored. And we saw a similar thing for Jack Mason with the Ali Arish fight. He perhaps let it go a little bit towards the end of the third round, and he can't make that same mistake again here against Sedina Set. He really needs to put a stamp of authority on this third period. Pumping out the double jab, but countered by an overhand right from the Frenchman. 
Yeah, Sex committing to one or two shots, but not wanting to stay in the pocket. And that was good work from Sex. And he stumbled Jack Mason there. I don't think he caught him particularly cleanly, just a little off balance when he attacked. And Mason has a very good guillotine. Seen Jack Mason submit guys with this very same hold before. Armin Guillotine, yeah. Paul's guard, this is tight, oh, Josh. Oh, is stop, 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 stop. Over. What, what? Stop, I, I see stop, No, no, no. I'm sorry, bro. No, 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 no. The referee, stop, Scott Mitchell, stop, stop, stop. has Fine. called the submission there. Really Sadina Sack protesting. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how they call this. Time, 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 time. Listen, listen. Listen to me. Listen, listen. I thought he went limp. I was wrong. Oh, no, no, You're going to restart. Oh, they're going to restart. Rich Mitchell understand? is going to restart this fight. I'm sorry, Jack. We just heard him say to You're the corner of Sedina Sack, he and thought he went limp. He, he didn't. So they are going to restart the fight now. It'll be interesting no, to see what they do here. Whether they... I can't... I, it's I very, it's very unfortunate situation, but... I a guillotine. I give credit for Rich Mitchell for electing to restart it, but obviously it's going to be contentious as to what position well, Rich Mitchell we was just saying him. he can't restart the fight in the guillotine, so it is going to be a standing restart. Brave call there by referee Rich Mitchell. Obviously, Sadina Sek, very frustrated initially. Jack Mason frustrated with the situation now, but nonetheless, we've got a fight to finish here. Well, very interesting to see how both guys approach this. Some blood on the face of Jack Mason, clearly Sek doing some damage on the feet. Mason immediately looking for that takedown up against the cage. Halfway through this third and final round. And I've got to say, Josh, I, I would have rather have seen the standing restart than the bout be called there. I think it's the right decision from Mitch Rich oh, Mitchell uh, absolutely, in the circumstances. Know, absolutely. The contentious point would be where would they restart? And, you know, it, it's just one of those things. I've got to say, it's, you know, it's good this bout is continuing and Jack Mason with a good top position here. And still a fair bit of time to work. Two minutes to go in this welterweight contest here at Cage Warriors 61. From the King Hussein Youth City Boxing Arena here in Amman, Jordan. Great night of mixed martial arts as ever here in Jordan so far. Still more to come. James Brum, Marat Peakov. Our main event on the broadcast. Jack Mason here in our co-main event. It's exactly where he needs to be, Josh. Yeah, I mean, this is what we've seen from Jack Mason in so many of his... 11 previous Cage Warriors performances. And it's such a good go-to if, if you feel you're in trouble, you can't quite work out how to be as aggressive as you'd like. You can always go back to this grinding, slightly slower paced fight. It's not pretty, but it certainly gets the job done. And to be honest, if Sedina Sek can't stand back up, that really is his problem. Absolutely. This is mixed martial arts. It's not kickboxing, it's not wrestling, it's not grappling, it's MMA. If you don't like being on your back, you've got to find a way out. Mason looking to really secure very tight upper body control around the, the shoulders. Thoroughly unpleasant position to be in for Sedina Sack. He's got to do something here because he's staying very static and obviously he's got to be wary of Mason driving that head under the armpit, but... Don't forget, you can join in the conversation on social media tonight with the hashtag CWFC61. Shout out to some of our fans tweeting us tonight. Anneli Sorensen, James Kappa, Graham Cook, Chris Scadden, Mark Wynn, all getting involved in the conversation, asking you with the hashtag CWFC61. Mason with this consistent top position again. I'd like to see him perhaps try and progress here. I think Sex starting to get very frustrated now with short knees and rabbit punches from the bottom. Mason so heavy when he wears on an opponent in this position. Final 10 seconds of the round. Sedina Sek now putting Mason on the cage. Oh, Mason jumping for the guillotine. Again. Time likely is going to be his worst enemy here, Josh. Oh. Well, the third round in the books, a very frustrating finish to that fight, Josh, but... Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that third round, obviously, the complexion of it was changed by that, that stoppage and that stand-up. I think, Mason. you know, on balance, perhaps Mason taking that round at the end, but you can't take away from the significant strike of 
Sedina Sackler put the fight on the floor in the first place. Absolutely not, you know. Mason seemed content to ride that one out after the restart, and really that's fair play to him. He thought he had the fight won, and, you know, through no fault of his own, had to go for a standing restart there, but able to secure the takedown and ride that one out from top position was Jack Mason. I mean, it's, you know, I've got to be honest, there are scenarios I could see this fight being called a draw. There really are. If that round went to sec, the second to Mason, the first is a 10-10. You know, we're talking the narrowest of margins in any one of these rounds as to which way it could swing, but there's a lot of ways you could call this one. As our judges tally their scorecards, we once again like to thank our Cage Warriors production staff for keeping this show rolling through some very, very adverse weather conditions here in Amman, Jordan. And again, the sincerest apologies of the Cage Warriors team uh, for any of you who've had troubles during tonight's broadcast. The sideways snow we had <laughs> for a good part of the day here. And the judges have reached a decision, and we will throw you two Joe Martinez in the cage to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the scorecards. Here are the judges' totals. Judge Ryan has it 30-27. Judges Cartledge and Leatherby 29-28. All three for your winner by unanimous decision, Jack the Stone Mason! A unanimous decision there for Jack the Stone Mason. Some very, very close rounds. As you said, Josh, that bout could really have gone one of a number of ways, but the unanimous decision for Jack Mason.